while it's been decades, Intel has decided to enter the GPU space one more time. This is what you might want to expect. Let's get into it. And while I think this might be a very interesting time, don't forget to like and subscribe for future Axial GT content. I do a mix of hardware and gaming news and reviews, with a little bit of commentary thrown in. With that out of the way, let's get started. Like I said in the intro, it's actually been decades since Intel has produced a graphics processor, at least a dedicated graphics processor. We're talking 1998, the Intel 740. It was a 350 nanometer graphics processing unit. Yes, that's right, I said 350 nanometers. Nowadays, we have AMD doing 7 nanometers and 7 nanometer plus, with plans to go lower. But the Intel 740 GPU had an AGP interface. And I actually believe that's why it was released, to try to get more people on the AGP port and phase out the old PCI Connect. But performance wise, it didn't do very well. It was competing with ATI, NVIDIA, and 3DFX's Voodoo 2, which was the top of the line at the time. And it didn't take long to fade to obscurity. But it did live on as Intel's integrated HD graphics. And we all know that hasn't aged very well. Web browsing and just the basics, it's fine. But a gaming powerhouse, it is not. Now we fast forward to today and Intel has been making some headway, just not very fast. We have seen the XE graphics already, but it was in the form of onboard graphics. You've seen them in a few laptops, the Acer Swift 3, the Asus BioBook Flip, and the Dell Inspiron 15 7000. And Intel also pushed out the Iris XE Max chip, known as DG1 or Discrete Graphics 1. But it was only an OEM part. The DG1 card had support for three 4K monitors, video acceleration, and support for FreeSync, and kind of for the entry level gaming crowd. But now Intel has decided to hit the enthusiast segment with the XE HPG that is rumored to be released in 2021. It's also called DG2, the second variant, and is rumored to have the performance of an RTX 3070, but that we shall see. One of the big caveats of some of these announcements and rumors is the TDP of the card. 75 watts up to 500 watts at the high end. Now some of you may know this is 200 watts more than RTX 3080. But hopefully that's just the data center card that Intel also plans to release and not for the enthusiast market. And DG2 is also said to support PCI Express 4.0 and ray tracing. And the consumer cards for the enthusiast market are also said to have DDR6 or DDR6X memory. One of the most interesting things that Intel did to develop its graphics architecture was poach AMD's top talent, namely Raja Kadori. Kadori was instrumental in AMD's Navi and Vega architectures. So there's the old adage, if you can't beat them, hire them and offer them more money. Another person of note is Jim Keller. He was the lead architect on AMD's Zen architecture. Now we come to my thoughts on price and availability of Intel's new discrete graphics card. And I think we shouldn't expect too much. Now the footage you're seeing here in the background was Intel's new XE graphics card that was teased just a few days ago with Intel engineering the future on March 23rd. So hopefully we actually might know something by then as this new GPU may be announced then. And it does have a few hidden messages inside the teaser. One part shows a binary code that has been found to be an IP address which takes you to XEHPG.com and the XEHPG scavenger hunt shown in this image here. But in other terms of things that have been found, the new GPU has 512 EUs or execution units. And no, they're not exactly like NVIDIA's CUDA cores or AMD's RDNA 2 cores, but there are some rough equivalents. The GPU is supposedly clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and could potentially have 14.75 teraflops of raw processing power which would put it somewhere around the 6700 XT and the 3060 Ti. But that's really all up in the air. We really don't know. It's also rumored to have a four to $500 price tag, which to me, yes, is too much, but that's just my opinion. And when it comes to availability, I think Intel will face the same problems as Nvidia and AMD have. They may announce it, but you won't be able to buy it. And that really isn't because of lack of want to. It's because Intel will have the same problems with suppliers supplying the parts to make the GPU as NVIDIA and AMD. We all know the GPUs right now are very hard to come by, if you can get one at all. So I would not expect to be able to buy this anytime this year, even if it did release. But it is kind of interesting to see Intel breaking into the duopoly of NVIDIA and AMD. That's kind of nice to see. So what do you guys think? Would you be interested in an Intel graphics card? And if the price was right, would you choose it over NVIDIA or AMD? 
Tell me in the comments below. I read all of them. I'm interested in what you have to say. Let's get this discussion going. And don't forget to like and subscribe for future Axial GT content. I really appreciate you watching. And until next time, I am out of here. You all have a good one.